Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 47. TidyX is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name is Ellis Hughes and you can find me on Twitter at, at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward and you can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick and you can find Tidy Explained on Twitter at, at Tidy underscore explained or you can g uh, gmail us at tidy.explained at gmail.com or uh, leave your comments, questions, thoughts on the YouTube uh, screencast page. All right. That sounds wonderful. Yes, please do leave comments. We love hearing from y'all. Uh, so this week, I think we have a, a fun little uh, project that we're going to be sharing with you. It's still on NHL. Uh, we still got <laughs> NHL on the brain. Uh, yeah. yeah. But we're, we're going to do some fun. Uh, some I think it's interesting code that we haven't talked about in the past. Um, and then getting a little bit into tables right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what we're doing here, uh, which tables are a data viz tool. Don't let anybody tell you any differently. For sure. Absolutely. All right. All right. So Patrick, you want to kind of give some setup and explanation about what we're going to be doing? Uh, I know yeah. I just gave a very high level. So, yeah. So uh, we're going to, we're going to actually um, look at using optimization uh, functions in R. So anybody who's ever uh, messed around in Excel and used the solver, uh, which is the optimizer uh, in Excel, where basically you're telling Excel to change certain values, certain parameters, based on a, a specific loss function. So based on minimizing or maximizing some sort of desired outcome, you're basically changing those parameters to find the optimal parameters. This is uh, similar to what we kind of did manually when we did the Pythagorean uh, wind theorem stuff, yeah, yeah. where we were attempting to find the best exponent for goals for and go goals against that minimized the amount of error in our win loss projections in hockey. And then we did it in baseball around tidy X 21 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this is very similar type of concept, uh, but optimizers can obviously get a lot more complex. You can add a lot more things into them. You can use different loss functions, all kinds of stuff uh, within an optimizer. Uh, there's whole fields of, of research on like optimization research. Uh, really cool. By no means am I an expert in, in any of it, uh, but I know enough to um, build some of these kinds of models that help us do things like project the probability that, uh, you know, project a, a, a team winning percent, uh, team winning like matchup, uh, projecting like points for and points against and like a team point spread or a margin of air, uh, a margin of victory and things like that. So today we'll do one of those optimizers again using hockey. We're going to actually uh, look at trying to predict winners. So what's the probability that one team beats another uh, when accounting for home ice edge? Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to originally do this on the uh, the 2021 season data uh, and then it looked like there's still not a ton of games. So I, I'm, I'm going to kind of hit pause on that for a second. We're going to go back to last season, the, the COVID mm -hmm. year. Um, yep, we're going to go back, back in time. And we're going to do the 2019-2020 season. Uh, so the first thing, as we've done with all these NHL ones, is we got to get some data. Well, the first thing is load some packages. Yep. So obviously we've got Tidyverse, Arvest for web scraping, which we've done like the past four in a row. <laughs> And GT, which, as Ellis said, we're going to be um, knocking out like a pretty cool kind of table, really, really clean visual. I really like yeah, those kinds it, of tables. It looks really nice. The team at our studio that's working on GT is just crushing it. it yeah. It, they make it silly easy to build up a very nice table. And I feel like we've done a GT table. Uh, actually, it was the astronauts dashboard. I think we did. Uh, there was a there was one that was a there was a tidy X. That was on astronauts. Was it Tidy X eleven? That's possible. It I was know on we did astronauts. one with Ted Ladaris as well. He did a GT, uh, yeah. GT table. At yeah. that point, we hadn't explored GT enough to really give it the uh, yeah. the um, display that it it deserved. I yeah. think we do a better job this time. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. So really nice and clean tables. The other thing I like about it is in in loading library GT, there are nice. Um, functions that will allow this because i was playing with this all week they'll allow you to put the gt tables directly into shiny apps so you know there's like a gt output and a, a render gt and those kinds mm -hmm. of things that'll let you put these in and make them interactive which is uh, also super fun. sweet 
So let's uh, let's scrape some data. So we've got our um, our data from the uh, Hockey Reference website again. We appreciate the folks uh, curating that data. This is the NHL 2019-2020. So this is the actual game by game data. So it's going to be a a long data frame that has the outcome of every game, and we're going to scrape that table just as we did in all the previous uh, uh, you know, the previous five or six um, tidy X's. Well, a number. We're going to select out only a. A few columns. What's that? Uh, we've done a number of times. <laughs> yeah, a number like of times. Week we, we, pull something we always out. have to scrape something, yeah. Um, so we're going to select a few uh, key columns. Uh, I'll keep the date, uh, but we want visitors, um, visitor goals, home, and home goals. I You could see that when I change the names, I use uh, column numbers for visitor and home. That's because in the table, they're both listed as G. So if I put a G for that visitor goals one and I put a G for the home goals one, R is going to bark back an error at me because yeah. it has two columns of the same name. Exactly. So I use the column numbers when I selected those two. And then I just create a little quick little uh, mutate here where I basically uh, create a binary uh, variable, kind of a dummy variable that basically says, did the home team win? Did the away team win? Or did it end in a tie? So Bro, go ahead and we pull that in that in and there's our cool there's little table fun data. and so you could see that's the head and if we do the tail we'll see how many uh so about 1082 1082 games yep. were total played that's what it looks like uh actually not entirely because i think we haven't filtered out oh no 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 They're, they they yeah. don't repeat the rows in this table when yeah. you're scraped. you always got to be careful when you're looking uh yeah at it yeah. like okay what are what are we actually looking at here yeah, exactly. All right. So there's a little bit of data prep uh, that's required here. So the first thing that I did was I want to create a string of team names. Um, and this string is going to then be used to house the team uh, ratings. So what we do is we are going to create a vector of team ratings, which we do in the next code uh, on, on line 40. And basically, I'm feeding each team a random um, I, I didn't use random. I actually just used a one, but you can see every team is ranked as a one. They're rated as a one. They all have the same strength, right? These are the team strengths. Um, and I add one extra value to account for home ice edge. So uh, does the home team uh, have any benefit over the away teams? So we have now our team rank. Uh, They're all the same strength. Vector. They're all the same strength. Exactly. And we're going to start to build in some of our functions to optimize these team uh, these team strength ratings. Mm -hmm. So the first one is uh, a game forecast function. Um, this is a, a function that's going to take the home team's rank, the visitor team's rank, and the home ice edge. And it's going to run this little logistic function that basically is going to provide us, based on those ranks and the home ice edge, the probability of the home team winning. So this is a logistic function uh, spitting out a probability. We talked about logistic regression uh, last week. We did logistic yep. regression with the Himalayan climbers. Um, you can certainly go back and, and check out those screencasts for more on that. But this function is basically just the way that we're going to play out the probability of one team beating the other, given whether they were home or away. Yep. Um, we need a loss function for the uh, um, optimizer. For the optimizer. Yeah. So this is the way that the optimizer is basically, it's checking itself every time and saying like, okay, am I doing better or am I doing worse? And, and then it's, it's optimizing those team ranks to um, identify the best values that improve our model. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to use a, a log likelihood function here. So basically what we're going to do with, if, within this function is it's going to be passed to the team ranks. And then it's going to use our game forecast um, data. So if you were just to run like that, all, everything through that mutate, the NHL to the mutate right now, you'll see that it projects the same value for every team because every team or every home team, because every home team has the same rank as the away team. It's still a one. Yeah. So we're we're basically saying okay, we're gonna run the, we're gonna run that game forecast for every game that was played, and then we're gonna do this little mutate, which basically is checking our prediction against the ground truth, against whether the home team actually won or not, and that's where that game result um, variable comes in. It says if the home team won, take the prediction probability. If the um, if the home team lost 
take one minus that probability, right? So the away team's probability. And then we're going to sum up the log of all those game results. And that's going to be our summed up log likelihood, which is what we're attempting to use as our loss function within the optimizer. So we'll go ahead and run that function. And now that brings us to the optimizer. So again, this is just like if we were to run in, uh, run this in uh, uh, Excel solver. Hmm. So the arguments that we're passing, we pass the parameters, which are the team ranks. These are the things that the model is going to be changing. The, those 31, uh, 32 team ranks, counting home ice edge, it's going to be changing those and toggling them up and down in order to find the best team ranks to hmm. fit this model or to explain the data. Um, if you were to do this in Excel, you could actually watch it. It's pretty fun. Like when you hit solve, you'll see the numbers like start to move up and down and, um, it's not as fun in R you just sort of sit there and just drink a coffee. Yeah. Yeah. You sit and drink a coffee. After Isaac goes so, burr. Exactly. Uh, but we pass it some parameters. We pass it our function. So the function that we're, we're passing it is the, uh, the log likelihood function. That's what we want to optimize on. And the, the method that we're going to use here is BFGS. There's a number of different methods. Um, this is a nonlinear optimizer method. Uh, it stands for, I wrote it down because I never remember the name, Broyden Fletcher Goldfarb Shano algorithm. Wow. Uh, so if you were doing this in Excel, you would click um, uh, nonlinear, I think it's like nonlinear GLM or nonlinear optimization or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but basically that's the method that we want to pass. And then the last thing is that, uh, that little control, um, f uh, parameter, uh, our function our argument. And we, we're passing FN scale equals negative one. And, and this is important for this kind of optimization problem because the optim function by default is going to try and minimize a given loss function. So if we were doing like regression, and we wanted to use like the, um, you know, the root mean squared error or something like that. We're trying to minimize that value here. What we're doing with our, our, our summed up uh, log likelihood is we want to actually use, um, uh, we want to maximize that function. So we want to identify the, the parameters, the team ranks that maximize the probability of observing the data that we observe. So that's how we're going to optimize. Mm -hmm. So we're going to set the function scale to negative one so that we maximize our loss, our loss function. And we're going to let that run for a second. Yeah, not, not too bad. There we go. And so now you'll see instead of everybody being one, we have team ranks. Uh, these are basically the team strength for, for that team for the, for the given season. Yep. So right? they're no longer one. The Ottawa Senators are they're, not very good. They're not very good, no. And I think Detroit, is it in alphabetical order? No? Oh, there they are, Detroit. They're, they're the worst team in the league, uh, which should come as no surprise when we did the Pythagorean wins. They were really bad, and et cetera. Yep. Um, okay, so we've got our updated team ranks. We want to make a plot of them. I'm going to put them into a data frame. I use the handy stack function here, mm -hmm. which basically took that vector of names and values and just stacked them up. And then I just rename the columns to something that's actually meaningful to us. Make it a little bit nicer. Um, and then make it nicer. And then we're going to make a cool little plot here. So we're going to um, we're going to take that data frame. We're going to filter out the home ice edge because we're not really caring about that. And we're going to plot these team strengths uh, on a, uh, a lollipop a lollipop plot. So we've got the x-axis is going to be the ranking. We're going to reorder the y-axis by teams based on that team ranking. So it's going to be highest to lowest. And we use geom call and geom point. We could have used geom segment. We could have used geom lollipop, I think, is one. There's there's a whole bunch. We've done a few of these. This yeah. was, like, super quick and dirty, so I just knocked it out. <laughs> this is the poor man's uh, lollipop. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Boston Bruins. Yeah. All the way and here, upper right, Tampa Bay Lightning, yeah. which, as we saw mm -hmm. last week when we looked at the scoring, yep. they were just uh, yep. far and away. A lot higher. We got the Detroit Red Wings. Unfortunately, they're negative. They're bad. Yeah, they're not, not so great. <laughs> um, so, how do we use these ranks? Well, we can actually now forecast uh, a team uh, winning or losing. So, we use our game forecast function, and we say, "What if the Boston Bruins played? Pick someone. Who do we want them to play? Ottawa Senators. Ottawa Senators, which was a bad team. So, we expect. Uh, I... I think you spell. Is Ottawa spelled wrong? I apologize, folks. If the, uh, oh, O-A-T-T-A-W-A. There it is. 
Yeah, the darn. So, wow. So the at home, the Bruins had about a 79. We're about So basically 79%. they should win most of the time. 30% over they, a coin flip. Yeah. So it's it's um, not really rando. Yeah. So so this is a, a kind of a cool and fun way to um, you know, play out a season and see uh, estimate which teams would win or, or lose or or whatever, right? And so, but if if they're at Ottawa, Ottawa's ice. They Ottawa, Ottawa has, has a, a worse chance of winning. Yeah, they still don't have a chance. Even oh, no, with no, it's, it's better. It's better. Yeah. I was like, well, oh, how did they oh, get worse? Sorry, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, Ottawa is still the is still the dog even at home though they're well, still the well. underdog. Yeah. Sorry guys. So that's a cool. This is a cool one. Um, yeah. I have I have another one that'll do like differences between um, actual goals scored and and uh, goals against in a game. So home and, and visitor. So you could get the um, home ice number of goals and you can get the margin of victory and and you know pick against point spreads and things like that. Uh, maybe we'll do that in, in another episode, but this is a fun yes. one just to get like team probabilities. So basically once there's enough games, maybe a, a third or a quarter of the way through the 2021 season, you could run this kind of model and then run it every week for the upcoming games. Because mm-hmm. if you go on hockeyreference.com, they have the entire season and it, the, the games that haven't been played yet just have blank values for goals scored. Yeah. Home team goals. So you could play out the next week and see like, okay, who do I estimate is going to win? And then see how well your model did and rerun the optimizer so that it learns again. And then the next week, make it learn again. And yeah, slowly over the season, it gets a little smarter. Nice. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun to do. We should do that. So let's uh, GT table this. So let's make a table of this. Let's uh, let's try to visualize this. this. Yeah. Yeah. So first thing uh, we wanted to do is Right now, all we have is the team and their strength. But we wanted to add a little bit of context around that. And for the last several weeks, we've done this process of pulling in a bunch of data on the teams uh, on the teams themselves, like how many games they played, uh, wins. So like basically summarizing a lot of that information, and we didn't want to manually do it. So And they're doing it for us. So let's do that. So we'll pull in um, the URL there. We're going to pull out the tables, we're going to bind them together so that because they've split it into uh, two different tables, we're going to bind them together. Uh, we're going to select the team, the games they played, wins, losses, goals for and goals against. Um, and then we're going to do kind of something unique where we wanted. So the way that they organized these tables is they had a header that indicated whether they're the Atlantic, Metropolitan, Central or Pacific Division, and they it stayed in the table. But we actually wanted to have that repeat for the actual teams themselves because we wanted it to live in our table, essentially. And, and so there's a couple ways you could have done this, but the way that we decided to do it this time is, okay, so we, we know that it's in the table. So let's do a case when and create this division field. And for the rows where Atlantic, Met- Metropolitan, Central, and Pacific exist, record that. Otherwise, put in a, an, an, an NA character. So let's quickly run this so that you get an uh, idea of what we'd view of NHL summary 2020. So you can, as you can see, there's this, this repeated value, and now we have this division field here. Uh, but now we've got NAs for all the teams. So how, how are we going to get this information to repeat all the way down? And the way you do that is from tidy R, there's this function called fill. And we say that, okay, for this column, division, and I think you can actually do it for multiple columns too, go down and replace any NAs with the value that's above it. And so now what we're going to do by running this fill, it's going to populate these NAs with Atlantic division. So we're kind of we, we have to make the assumption, in this case it does work out, that all the teams that are listed under Atlantic Division are indeed Atlantic Division. I mean, we just happen to know that. So be careful when you use fill because it can, can bite you if, it, if, it, um, if the ordering gets messed up. So use fill, then we remove this row because now we don't really care about it. Um, do some mutates to convert uh, values to numerics. 
we identify the playoff team. So we've done this in the last couple uh, episodes and then calculate win percentage. So now we got this data at her. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> where we've got team, games played, division, playoff team, win. So like basically anything we'd want to know about it, given that we also know their strength. Mm -hmm. So it's just like providing context. So now we've got this data. So now we're going to actually go to generate the table, uh, the GT table. So we're going to take the updated ranks, which remember has team and the, the strength that we gave them. We're going to filter out the home ice edge record because we don't really care about that for this purpose. Um, then we're going to arrange it by team rank so that they're ordered. Uh, we're going to left join in the NHL, so that data that we just pulled in, the contextual data by team. And so we're having to identify because they had different column names. Uh, the, the team is equivalent to TM in our data set. We're going to group by division. So this is an important thing that we're, I'm going to touch on in a second because we discovered this as, as we were working on it and we're like, oh, wow, this is really cool because the other way is a massive pain in the butt. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. Mm. <laughs> so, so we've got our, our data set up where we've got team rank, team, games played, you know, a bunch of information about that. Throw it into our GT. Uh, we, we tell it uh, actually the row name column. So the, the column we want you to be using to identify row name is team. So it'll go, okay, boop, pop that over to the left-hand side. We're going to set the table header, so use tab header. So the title is NHL team ranks and subtitle is 2019 to 2020. They come with some handy dandy uh, helper functions like MD. So now I can write in, um, in Markdown and it'll apply the styling that you'd see from Markdown for our table. And so this piece here, so you can see it's a chunk of code. So what, what is the, uh, in Markdown, what does the two um, stars mean versus the one star? Yeah, so the two stars indicate that it'll be bold yeah. and the one star indicates that it'll be italicized. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the reason we did a group by is otherwise you'd have to do something like this, which we've now commented out, which is we wanted the table to separate out the teams by their division so that we can kind of visualize that. Um, so you normally or manually you do like tab row group, the group name, you manually write that in and then you identify which rows belong to that group. So this is just yeah. a massive pain. We're not doing that. It's it's not. Um... It's not awful if if you, if you have a small table like this, yeah. but if you had a, a big table, it would be a, a disaster. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. Then we're going to change column names to look nice in the table itself. So change team rank to team strength, playoff team to playoffs, win percent to win uh, actual percent. There's an HTML helper there so that it um, converts nicely. Uh, then we're going to add coloring to the columns. Uh, Pat, you want to kind of take us through this? Yeah, so uh, this is basically, um, if you think about GT, we're really kind of building, so we did an Excel solver and now we're doing Excel pivot tables and we're going to do some conditional formatting on our columns of interest here. So uh, we use the data color function, which is going to tell GT, hey, color this column, which we um, indicate in the VARS, uh, in the VARS uh, function there. I do... I wonder if they. I wonder if we could have put win percent in there as well. Like, I wonder if you could do multiple, or if I it has to can. be. Yeah, uh, eh, but we did it either way. Yeah, um, maybe that's something to try. Uh, so, so we give it. We tell it we're going to go over the team rank column and we're going to color it. We'll use the scales package for this uh, call numeric function. Uh, we feed it the palette, so the the red, white, and blue, the low, medium, and high coloring that we're interested in. Um, we could have made it binary, but it doesn't matter. It's numeric, so it's going to identify the range of values that are in that column, and then it's going to distribute the colors appropriately. Um, the domain equals null. Uh, we searched around. I don't think we ever came to a consensus on why it has to be there, but it has to be there. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So if, hey, anybody, yeah. if anybody knows and wants to comment on the YouTube page or on Twitter, uh, we actually have no idea why it has to be there, but it just does. It's like one of those things. So we're gonna call them the, we're gonna color the team rank column. We're gonna do the same thing for the win percentage, even though obviously they're going to be highly correlated. Uh, but 
it's yeah. more just a function of showing how these things work, um, yes. same colors, etc. And then we're going to uh, put in these handy dandy functions called format number and format percent. So format number is saying this is a numeric column team rank, and we only want two decimals so that it doesn't look too ugly in the table. Mm -hmm. And then format percent, if you recall from the table, uh, we had it in a numeric value between zero and one. Right. So we want this to be a true percent with the percentage sign for the end user to see. So by passing format percent, it's actually telling it that it's a percent. And we said two decimal places as well. And now we have a cool table that has the divisions identified and uh, kind of, yeah, all the values. I wonder if there would be I wonder if there's a way to repeat the header for each of those. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, like repeat, repeat that. That, this? Repeat that header for each of the the no. I mean, I bet you there is, but uh, I kind of yeah, like just leaving it at the top. So, yeah, that's super cool. Nice clean table. Yep. Um, you can do other things, highlighting the the black, you know, like highlighting single black lines to start and stop one of the divisions, etc. But uh, I just think it's like really clean and neat to kind of look at and uh, yeah. So, no. yeah, I think it's a pretty fun table. I like how they correlate, show correlates between strength and win. I, I yeah, just a fun fun table. I, I hope we did a little bit better justice for GT as well. Yeah, hopefully. Right. Yeah. All right. Cool. cool. I think with that we can uh, probably end it. Um, as always, thank you for joining us. My name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at Ellis underscore Hughes. And I'm Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at at OSP Patrick. Uh, at tidy x uh, tidy underscore explained is at tidy underscore explained is our twitter handle tidy dot explained at gmail.com is where you can email us or of course if you're not tweeting us or emailing us you can comment on the youtube screencast channel all right thank you so much and keep exploring your world <laughs>